thank you for joining me for another episode of Get Ready. And I'm really pleased to bring to you my guest today, someone who I heard about as he was another speaker on the Tapping World Summit that I've done every year for a while. And then I thought, hey, I want to get to know this guy. I reached out and we started chatting and he's awesome. And I'm really proud to uh, have the opportunity to become friends with this gentleman and his expertise. So let me tell you a little bit about him first. Dr. Damon Silas is a psychologist, a coach, and an artist who tackles the subjects of mental health, personal development, and professional growth with dynamic twist. He has used the diverse places and clients with whom he has worked, as well as the challenges he has experienced in order to help countless others increase and exponentially improve their healing and growth. He's a speaker, two-time published author, with another one on the way, radio and podcast host, a mental health mixtape, which he found, uh, which can be found on WDRB Radio, as well as iHeartRadio, and from morning, that's M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, from morning to action, out on iTunes. He's also a hip-hop dance instructor. <laughs> He's a husband and father of two fur babies and is originally from the Boston area, though he loves calling North Carolina home now. Dr. Damon Silas, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Brad. Uh, but that was like a lot in a bio, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, but thank you so much. I, I'm thrilled to be here. Well, it's, it, it's been such a pleasure to get to know you. And, uh, and I'm excited to have you share some of what your expertise is with my audience, particularly around your book about what is your action plan. So, you know, such an important thing for folks because everybody wants to improve their lives. Mm -hmm. but more often, it's more of a fantasy <laughs> and, you know, a goal without right. a plan is just a dream. So what... Uh, so what brought you to write this book? What was your inspiration? Yeah, so um, I'm going to try to give you the short version of this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but essentially, uh, it, it was based on my first book, which is From Morning to Night. And that was, that's a uh, biography or autobiography just about the different losses that I've experienced. And uh, what I realized as I was talking about that book to different groups initially when it first came out several years ago, um, I wanted to give the listener um, or the audience member tangible action items that they could use and take home with them when they're dealing with, you know, periods of feeling stuck and lost and maybe in a dark space. And so um, not only did I want to do that, but then I came across this book called The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. Excellent. Book. And yes, yes, oh my goodness, I am so glad um, whoever told me about that book, I was so grateful for that uh, because he talks about lifesavers in this book and savers as an acronym uh, for things that you can do on a daily basis first thing in the morning, which um, I still do uh, since four years ago when I received those, uh, that gift from Hal. Um, and so I kind of use that as inspiration as well to come up with action, which is the um, the acronym for the different items that, that we can delve into a little bit later. Well, yeah, absolutely want to hear that. <laughs> should, should we just go into... Just... <laughs> all... No, let's make them wait. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, you know, I do love a cliffhanger. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, so and for everyone, one of the tools that, uh, that Damon uses is EFT. So we'll... we'll just... So we'll, uh, you can tap on your patience while we uh, drag it out. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Just Ah, <laughs> uh, no. Let's go ahead and... Uh... <laughs> All right. Fine. Fine. <laughs> uh, well, okay. So, yeah, again, as I was thinking about ways to help the audience just work through their pain, their hurt, their periods of just being stuck, it was this, this action. And I thought about every time that I was stuck that I always took action. Even when I didn't know what the outcome would be, even though when I didn't really wanna do anything. Um, you know, I, I was thinking about even the time after my sister died and uh, my friends would come to the house and try to get me out of the house. Uh, there was that part of me that didn't wanna do anything, right? I just wanted to stay, stay in that, that sadness and that hurt. Um, 
fortunately I did not listen to that part of myself and I ended up going out with them. And that to me was like a huge part of my healing process. So um, that being said, so what is action? Action is an acronym for A, affirmations or affirmations. Okay, so affirmations is a beautiful thing that I learned when I was going, actually through my tapping training, uh, we have to go through our own therapy and, and um, the therapist that I was working with at the time taught me all about affirmations, which is stating something in the form of a question. Um, so basically, why is this so easy for me? Right. It's the, the um, process, I know St. John, who's been a guest on Get Ready. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and so then the C is for creativity, using your creative juices to get you going in a, a different direction. So whether that's painting, drawing, uh, writing poetry, making music, uh, whatever it is, it's just tapping into that creative side of our brains that so often gets neglected, especially when we get stuck in those periods of, of uh, darkness. Uh, T is talking. So talk to, talk to others. Um, in particular, professionals. There are people like yourself, Brad, who, you know, whether they go to you or myself or, you know, a therapist, a coach, but somebody who's been trained, it could be a spiritual advisor, somebody who has been trained to listen to what you have to say, what you have to talk about, and to be able to reflect back to you in a way that helps get you moving in the right direction. Uh, the I is for introspection, you know, doing that tough internal work that a lot of us don't want to do, right? Because it can, <laughs> it, it can open our eyes up to some stuff where we're like, oh, I wanted to keep that down here. Like, <laughs> like that is not what I wanted to come to the light. Right. Uh, but, you know, once we then can acknowledge it, and it's similar to the process of EFT, like we have to be able to see that stuff so that we can acknowledge it and then work through it. Um, the O is for openness, so being open about your process. And I don't mean being an oversharer, because I'm sure you know some <laughs> oversharers. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but if you could imagine. Yeah, I can imagine, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, there's always that one person that's like, I wear my heart on my sleeve, and I will tell you how it is. I'm like, well, you don't have to do that all the time. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's when you start to go overshare. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, but it is about, you know, finding those times and those spaces where it is okay to share that information and when it's the right time. Yeah. And what I found even when I started to talk about the my first book from morning to night to other people, what they would say is, oh my goodness, I've been through a loss, so I could really benefit from that. Or I know somebody who's working through loss, so thank you so much for sharing about that. So it allows for a connection and a vulnerability and, and for our humanness just to connect. Yeah, when we're open about those things and talk about them, it's amazing how many people will say, oh my God, I thought it was just me. That, that's and so it. That it, it creates an opening for communication that is so healing and so profound. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's, there's nothing worse than feeling like you're alone in your journey. And um, to be able to share that with other people, like you said, and to almost like there's a weight lifted off your shoulder, like, phew, I'm not alone. And this isn't crazy or abnormal. Right. Yeah. And um, finally, the N is for nowness so it's just about learning how to be present in the here and now because to put it into really kind of elementary terms i'm going to boil my four years of grad school into a sentence <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, you know when we find ourselves in an anxious space we usually are worried about something that has happened or um, i'm sorry um will happen and when we find ourselves in a depressed space it's usually about things that have happened right and uh so just learning how to be present in the now through mindfulness meditation even tapping can be a great way to do that uh, but that brad is the action plan in a nutshell awesome. a really big nutshell but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's an excellent nutshell then <laughs> so, uh, um, <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. So 
yeah, all, all very key things for people to experience. So, so it came about from, as a way of helping people through a grief process, but it sounds like something that obviously could be beneficial to anybody in terms of getting from where they are to where they're going, mm-hmm. even if they haven't experienced a, a loss. Not that, you know, all of us have not experienced loss in certainly uh, in the last part of this year, but. Uh, Thank you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Loss is one thing that pretty much everyone's experiencing, but mm-hmm. so to be able to take that and, and create a plan from that and say, okay, here's what happened. That's, this is where you are. Here's a way out. Here's, mm-hmm. here's a, here's a, a plan to, to get out of this place. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's not a linear process, right? It's, um, and maybe some days you're more focused on the C than the N, you know, but um, it's It might really, be your TNAC plan. It, <laughs> right. Scramble the word letters around. <laughs> yeah, T-N-O-I-A-C, <laughs> right. Uh, but whatever it is for you is, is exactly what is needed, so. And that's the thing is, yeah, we don't always have one, uh, one, one linear thing. And there's different moments where it's like, yeah, I may need to jump to this. Like maybe the time to experience the power of now is right now before I get into talking or, uh, or being creative. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Good one for us, for, for most of us to start with. <laughs> right. Right. It, it, I'm telling you, and, and, you know, just like with the inspiration from the Miracle Morning, um, just starting every day off with that moment of, you know, and period of silence and internal introspection, um, even tapping. I mean, that's how I start my days off is with meditation and tapping, like it just hands down. If I don't do it, which I can't even recall, like the last time I haven't, maybe when I was on vacation, um, but you, it's like, you notice it, you notice not having that in your life when you don't do it. Yeah. It's, there's a story of a, uh, classical pianist and I can't remember, uh, I don't know if it was Vladimir Horowitz or someone like that who said, you know, if I, if I miss practicing one day, I notice if I'm miss practicing two days, my manager notices. If I miss practicing three days, my audience notices, <laughs> And, uh, I and that's why that. I, I use a, a habit tracker. I have, um, so I have all these things on there, tap, meditate, journal. And so I mark it off each day. So I remind myself to do that. So that's first, yeah, first thing I do in the morning is some tapping mm. and I do some stretching. I do, I journal, I meditate. Mm-hmm. I have to do the journaling first to get all that stuff out, to try to clear my mind before I try to sit down and meditate. Before you, okay. Okay. <laughs> And I can't say it's entirely effective. It's, uh, most of my meditation is trying to remember, oh, right, I'm meditating right now. <laughs> have not mastered that. <laughs> and then I do more tapping on, even though I'm so bad at meditating. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cycle. It's <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that having, having that morning routine is, uh, is, is so good. And, and yeah, Hal's book, uh, really helped me in formulating my, uh, my morning routine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, um, I will say it was a game changer for me. So I would definitely encourage people to, to engage. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'll have a link in, in, uh, it'll be tap with brad.com forward slash Damon, but I'll put a link to Hal's book as well, because both of these books, will help you <laughs> moving forward and taking action. Mm-hmm. And let me be, let me be clear with the audience. I don't, I don't um, get paid to <laughs> advocate his book or talk. So <laughs> this is just me being influenced by it. So. <laughs> a- absolutely. Yeah. You know, well, yeah. that's what we're here to do is to find those things. That, uh, it's goes along with the O in your action plan, the openness of sharing what we have found in terms of, you know, certainly for, for both of us, how we've come to this work has been a process of our own stuff. And, oh, what have I found works for me? And then, you know, I don't want to keep that to myself. 
And that's mm-hmm. why openness is important. It's like, if you found something that is helpful for you, by all means, share it. And that's, that's what this whole show is about, is to be able to share those things that we have found, those things that are helping our lives work better so mm-hmm. that everyone else, you know, it's like, oh, hey, there's something that might be beneficial to me. And, and certainly, uh, you know, we're obviously both advocates of a morning routine <laughs> because how you start your day can be so critical to uh, how the rest of your day goes. And I think it was mm-hmm. a woman named Annie Dillard who says, how you spend your day is how you spend your life. Mm. Mm. That's it. You know, what do you choose to do with each of those moments? Because we yeah. so often think of, well, I really want to have this. We have the vision for, I want to be doing this kind of work. I want to be living in this kind of place. I want to have this kind of relationship. Um, and without a plan for that, tomorrow I'm just going to be fantasizing again and fantasizing. And time goes on and 10 years go by. It's like, yeah, one of these days is going to happen. It's like, okay, when are you going to do the things that you need to do? <laughs> Right. Yeah. And, and you know, it, it reminds me of um, a colleague of mine. I was looking at my notes from yesterday because I was on a group coaching call and he said um, that a goal without action is just an intention. Yeah. And that to me, like I lo- similar to what you were just saying is we can all have goals, but if we're not doing anything about it, it just remains in it. Like I intended to do it, but <laughs> what does that do? Uh, for you or for everybody else around you, you know, and, and so it really is important to to just take that step. And even if we don't know, um, you know, what the rest of the journey is going to look like, yeah. that's okay. We don't have we don't have to. Right. Just figure out some of the things that you know. You figure out the destination and then figure out the steps. Uh, I don't know if you read Atomic Habits by James Clear, and uh, he he talked about this book on this show. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, don't worry about the goals, worry about the habits. What is this? What are the steps? Now it's, you know, the goal decides where you want to go, but it's like, okay, I can't, if I just focus on the goal every day, but not the steps to to take, I can't Mm -hmm. get there. It's like, what do I need to do right now? What is the first step I have taken? So that's why having those, that morning routine, having those daily habits. and, And that's how you decide what those morning, what that morning routine is. And this mm-hmm. is why you and I both tap and meditate. It's like, okay, for the goals that I want, I need to be my best self. What are the things that help me be my best self? What are the things that help me be most, most clear, most uh, have the best intention? Oh, tapping, meditating. And for different people, it's going to be different things. Mm-hmm. For me, mm-hmm. uh, my health is important. So exercise is on my morning routine. Mm-hmm. Uh, reading. So I listen to books on tape while I'm walking or, or running. Mm-hmm. And so it's, you know, figuring out what are those action steps and that's coming up with that plan that those action steps that will move the needle in the direction of that goal and then doing them every day. As I think Jim Rohn said, um, success is just a series of small disciplines done over and over again. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it. And, you know, and I think too, I, I want to be clear with people that. Also, sometimes action looks like rest. (laughs) (laughs) Amen. (laughs) Yeah. Because, you know, there are so many people out there who think they have to keep going and keep, and I'm, I'm guilty of this too. So I'm speaking, (laughs) I'm speaking for myself as well, but like you, you get in this habit of constantly feeling like there's something to do and that you have to keep doing something in order to achieve that goal. But sometimes it's in those moments of rest that those answers come to us, that the peace or the clarity or the calm comes to us. And then we can move in a completely different direction or stay on that same path. Right. Right. Yeah. If we're just focused on action, 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 moving down the road, we might totally miss that we're on the wrong road. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Exactly. What did I want to do again? It doesn't matter. Just keep running. Just, just keep going yeah, right. until you're exhausted. And then you pass yep. out and you're lying there. It's like, this isn't where I want it to be. <laughs> <laughs> but I figured I'd just keep running until. <laughs> yeah. So figure out that plan. But yeah, absolutely. Self-care has to be part of that plan. Mm-hmm. 
you know, it, um, I know, I know I just keep throwing out quotes, but Abraham Lincoln talking about, you know, if I had, if I had six hours to saw, tr- saw down a tree, I'd spend the first four sharpening the saw. And that's mm. that taking care of yourself and being mm. in the best shape possible. Cause if you just go at it and the saw isn't, and the saw isn't sharpened, that's going to be a really nasty six hours. It sure is. <laughs> You're going to work really hard to do. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And, and, you know, and again, I think that's why it is important to have that reminder of it's okay. It's okay to stop and pause and take care of yourself and do what you have to do. And I know some people might say, well, I don't have time to, and, but that's the exact reason why you need to. You don't have time not to. to right, right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, it's, yeah. and it's part of that, well, I mean, it's part of several of the, the steps that you mentioned in there. It's certainly, it's uh, the, the, the openness, the talking, that's the self-care, the I, the uh, N. I mean, <laughs> so many of those are have, have self-care built into them. And, uh, and, and for people to recognize that it's not selfish, that your action plan ultimately benefits others. Everybody. Right. Right. Yep. And, uh, you know, I think we're taught from a young age that being selfish is a negative thing and it couldn't, you know, to, to me, in my opinion, it couldn't be farther from the truth. I think, you know, being selfish again, like you said, it, it, fills your tank up so that you can be then present for everybody else around you. And you can have the energy that you need when you're in these, you know, relationships and in these conversations and helping others uh, because there's nothing worse than, I mean, even like sometimes if I, if I have sessions back to back to back, sometimes I almost start to feel bad for the last person on my case. So like, that's not fair to me, nor is it fair to them. Right. Right. Um, and so I've learned over the years to build in some, build some in cushions. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I always, I always have an hour between sessions so that I can refuel, you know, I sometimes talk about, you know, you can, you can't write a check to charity if you haven't put a deposit in your own account first, because mm. that check's mm. going to bounce. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So uh. recognizing for, for people to recognize that going through your action plan is it serves others as well as yourself. It's a, it's a total mm-hmm. win-win situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, you know, I just, I, I would love to be in a, in a world where people value themselves as much, you know, cause it's, and we all do it again. I'm, I'm not saying this as though I'm not guilty of it, but sometimes we take care of other people before we take care of ourselves and think that that's the noble thing to do. That's the right thing to do. And, <laughs> and we can also take care of ourselves. And that also is a noble thing to do. Yes, absolutely. And sometimes a radical thing to do. <laughs> And maybe it's time for folks to start being radical. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a, everyone be tapping. I know it's a trigger word for a lot of people right now. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but, but radical self-love in terms of seeing how that benefits others. And, and, not, and not just because it, you should do it for others. Like, okay, if it's going to serve others, then I'll take care of myself. Because everyone is worthy and deserving of taking care of themselves. Everyone is worthy. I, you know, I, I believe we are all magnificent children of the universe, worthy and deserving of the best this world has to offer. Mm. And allowing ourselves to, to have that. And truly, as we allow ourselves to experience that, we can't help but make things better for other people. And that abundance spills over to other people. Mm. Absolutely. And, and as you said, yeah, that's, that's for, for a lot of people, that is a radical idea mm-hmm. and it's, um, it shouldn't be. <laughs> it, should. <laughs> it, should, it, it just shouldn't, but you know, and, and no judgment, yep. yeah, no, no judgment, judgment to, to past programming and, and to current programming. 
Um, and that's why I love EFT too, because it helps to reprogram that way of thinking and saying like, you know, I should be running myself ragged versus it's okay to stop and, and take care of myself. Right. And it's, and it's better and I can perform better if I, uh, you know, there's a reason why professional sports teams don't, <laughs> you know, it's like you don't just do five my tournaments thoughts. in a day. <laughs> Yep. I was just thinking about athlete, even, you know, the best athlete is going to be taken out of the game at some point so they can get a breather. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 You gotta, gotta, gotta build that in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so you think it's important for people to have an action plan? Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm slightly biased. Um, Yes. <laughs> yes. We all need it. We all could benefit from it, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, and again, I, I, I think it's about envisioning what the world and what everybody in the world is capable of and what our potential is and what can happen once we step into that and, and really start to reach towards that potential that uh, and just imagining how different this world would be if that were the case. I love that. I love that. I often end, uh, I'll write certain things and I'll end it with consider the possibilities, dot, dot, dot. And, and yeah, imagining as you give yourself permission to come up with your action plan, to look at what can I do to feel better, to do better? What does that look like in the world? And then as you pass that on to other people, as you go through Damon's book and you hand it off to someone else <laughs> or encourage them to buy their own copy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> what then, you know, allowing them, inspiring them to reach their own potential and just imagining the world if everyone was, you know, getting through their hard times and moving through that and, stepping into their potential man what does the world look like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right getting chills <laughs> <laughs> so so other than um the first step going out and and getting the book what is uh, what is the first step that you would tell folks in this moment right now what would you encourage folks to do i want to encourage them to be open and honest with themselves, but also to be compassionate with themselves. Mm. You know, so many times people beat themselves up for not being in the space that they wanted to be in or when they wanted to be in it by. Yeah. Um, we give ourselves a, an expiration date when it comes to you name it, you know, healing or, you know, having children or a house or whatever it may be. And who says, you know, and so learning how to be compassionate with yourself. And I think once we can get to that place, um, then, then you can start to really take that intentional action towards your growth and healing. Right. When we recognize and, that and, we're doing the best that we can and, and even the people who programmed us, that's why we were saying earlier, no judgment. They were doing the best they could with what they knew. With what they, Pe mm -hmm. people, you know, if you've gotten crappy programming, the person who gave that to you, they believed it and they thought it would have been irresponsible for them to teach you anything else. Mm. And so mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's, it's acknowledging, okay, I've been doing the best I could. And now having that compassion and now there's that, that freedom to say, okay, and it's not working for me anymore. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I love that. Like just having that freedom, you get it, you get to choose, you get a choice. You have a say in the matter and, and you are empowered and can be empowered, you know, and, and we have a choice always. We could always play the victim role or we can take our circumstances and change them. I mean, you know, I could have easily said, I don't, I don't know what it's like to go get therapy. I don't know what it's like to be a psychologist. I don't know what it's like to, you know, become an EFT practitioner because I didn't have any of those models in my life. 
but just by taking action in those moments and saying, even if I don't know that to have that sense of empowerment, that's what I would love for people to understand is that you, you can always be empowered with the right tools. Yeah. And they're out there. Mm -hmm. And they're out there. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for, for having allowed yourself to be open to discovering those things and then taking them and sharing them with others and making the difference that you make. Um, grateful to have that we're on the same team and uh, grateful yes. to know you and uh, grateful for you, to you for, uh, for sharing your insights with this audience. Thank you. Well, and thank you for, you know, opening up your platform to me and, um, you know, for doing this for your audience and for all the amazing, wonderful work that you do for the world. My pleasure. <laughs>